So the past hundred years of quantum mechanics has given us a wealth of technologies that we now take for granted. Electronics, lasers, GPS, atomic clocks, field sensors, and so on. None of those involve entanglement. So our research uh, in, in distributed entanglement can both advance existing point technologies, these, these point sensors like clocks and field sensors, but also open up a whole new world of applications in secure communications, in uh, networking, in information processing, in quantum computing, materials processing, and, and so on. What we're doing here is a rather focused effort on this distributed quantum entanglement. Because we're investigating a diverse array of physical platforms, I get to learn about solid state materials, uh, atomic systems, ion systems, and photonics that all in one defense lab that I wouldn't have seen uh, otherwise. By and large, the problems that people are facing now in quantum computing are, I think, some of the most difficult problems that scientists have had to face in, in bringing any technology to market. In any setting, even DoD or industry, where collaboration often is kind of hindered by the need to have you know, proprietary information, it's still very important in this field to have these efforts be interdisciplinary, to have them be between universities and national labs, and to have sort of large-scale collaborations. There are a number of different researchers, experimentalists and theorists, working uh, in different directorates here. For example, I work with people in the computer and information sciences directorate on a variety of kind of quantum computation questions and thinking about problems that quantum networks are well suited to solve. I mean, that's been a real boost, I think, to my research here, being able to reach, you know, reach out to a broad array of researchers in different fields. With quantum information, uh, we have external partnerships through what's called the Center for Distributed Quantum Information. And this is an extramural effort that involves university partners, industrial partners, other uh, defense labs. We combine this with ARL's open campus model, where industrial and university partners can work in our space and we can also hire their graduate students to, to work here as well. The Neutral Atom Lab focuses on using neutral atoms to make uh, new and better sensors, uh, communication devices, uh, any quantum applications, quantum technologies uh, that are suited for neutral atoms. And neutral atoms are advantageous because you can cram uh, a lot of them into a small area and so they make a very efficient light matter interface and they also make uh, very exquisite sensors because you can use many atoms in a single readout. We really have lots of opportunities to collaborate with, with many different institutions. Uh, we have partnerships with the Joint Quantum Institute nearby where we've been able to get uh, grad students from the University of Maryland uh, and that's really accelerated our research as we've gotten up and running uh, here in the Neutral Atom Lab. Here at the Solid State Lab, we look at optically active defects in solid state materials, uh, specifically for applications in quantum information and sensing. An advantage of using the solid state systems for sensing is that the, um, the technology can be more easily incorporated into actual scalable, physical, portable systems um, that could actually be taken on the battlefield to do sensing and navigation. In this lab, we network trapped ions using quantum frequency conversion. So the photons that are emitted directly by the ion are substantially attenuated in optical fiber. So we use quantum frequency conversion to frequency convert photons that are directly emitted by the photon into the near-infrared or telecom so that we can take two ions which are separated by a fair distance and network them using those frequency converted photons. Frequency conversion is important for quantum networks because it will allow you to extend the range between those quantum memories. Without it, you would not be able to uh, network trapped ions which are located a fair distance apart. For example, in another lab or um, even in, an, in another facility. Here at our, in the solid state lab, what we're looking at is we're looking at quantum memory in rare earth atoms in solids, uh, where we want to store single photons of uh, light inside of a cryogenically cooled solid which has lanthanide rare earth atoms in the solid state matrix. Collaboration is vital in physics research in this particular area of research. Nobody wants to reinvent the wheel. Every time we do something in physics we want to ask someone who's done it before or has done something similar. We're building off of each other's work and Fortunately, we're in a community that's very friendly and very open and people tend to be very happy to discuss what they're doing. Um, and that's the way that we make progress is together by, by helping each other. Identifying areas within quantum information science that are impactful to the DOD mission. 
um, and I think we've, we've started to do that. And in the DoD, we've started to also um, influence the direction of quantum information science with our new CDQI program. We know that distributed entanglement or even micro-entangled states uh, can enhance the performance of atomic clocks or magnetometers. And so many of the technologies that we have right now will simply be improved uh, dramatically. And in well into the future, then we could have uh, these ultra-secure quantum communication systems or quantum computing systems or material simulation uh, capabilities that we don't have right now. And ARL is certainly going to be playing a role in this by, uh, in large part, through these collaborative mechanisms. These are sufficiently complicated uh, research avenues that these collaborative opportunities through the defense, uh, with other DOD labs, with other university partners, play a critical role. Thank you.